Hey everybody, it's your friend Kuros Paladin. This is the first live video I've ever done of myself and I am kind of excited because I received today my copy of Dungeon Duels Shovel Knight other way around, Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, the board game. Now, I am a huge board game geek. Uh, I have over, I have close to 300, possibly even more than 300 board games. Uh, I am in my game room right now. It is an absolute mess. <laughs> um, I had to do a little cleaning up, so things look a little bit nice around me, but behind the camera, it is terrible. <laughs> but uh, I am a geek. Uh, I'm not a really, really huge geek uh, when it comes to um, everything gaming, but I really am a geek. And long ago, in the days of college, nights, you know, like nights, uh, I don't know what happened. It was a joke that started. One of my friends started dropping nights off on me, and then it just kind of stuck. Another friend of mine, it's Moose. Don't ex I try not to explain. So, uh, what I wanted to do today is an unboxing of Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, the board game. So, uh, I also have here my plushes. Uh, I just thought it would be kind of cool to have these two old guys here. Uh, you know, this is a very special little plush for me. Um, he, uh, well, I say he, it. Uh, it was with me at the hospital when I was recovering from surgery where I had the cancer removed. And now we have a cat that's getting in the way. So let's get Dax. For those of you who always hear me say on my YouTube videos, I love my cat, I love my cat, there she is. So, uh, but yeah, this little guy was at the hospital with me, and uh, that's when I really kind of connected with the character more than anything, because I had hours and hours of nothing to do. So uh, I couldn't read, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep, because uh, I had you know, six IVs in this arm, um, for those of you, if you can see, this is where I had another bandage because this is the tissue where they took that went into here. Um, so I had huge bandages on both arms. I couldn't hold anything to read. So this little guy sat in the bed, bed with me or over on the table next to me, and uh, I really kind of connected with it. And then this little guy showed up shortly after uh, because I finally found one. So uh, King Knight, Shovel Knight, they're just really great. They're going to hang out over here if you can see them. So let's get right to the meat of it. So Shovel Knight Dungeon Duel is a board game. Um, the story, let's go way back to, I think it was Gen Con 2019, where I was in one of the exhibit halls playing a game. I don't remember which one it was. <laughs> it's Gen Con, thousands of games. And uh, you've heard him on some of my other videos, Astroneer and City of Heroes, Captain Clueless. His son came up to me and handed me this flyer. That was for Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, the board game, and it was a Kickstarter. And I looked at it, I looked at it, and it said, well, the date had already expired for the pledge. And I thought, oh, darn. So I went to the Kickstarter page anyhow, and it turns out that particular start was revoked or whatever. They stopped it because they got it wrong or for whatever reason. And I was really excited uh, because, A, two things, it meant, A, I could get into it, and B, they thought about it, and I guess they did things better. I'm not entirely sure. So I ordered it. I cannot remember the date that the Kickstarter pledge uh, started. It was funded very quickly, somewhere around 2,500 or 2,900. I forgot. Uh, people backed it. They raised almost a quarter of a million dollars, and that was way back in 2019. I've been anticipating this. For almost two years it's finally here so let's get to the actual unboxing so it is a massive box as you can see look at that holy cow I mean this little guy uh, holy wah for those of you that have been listening I'm uh, going to be in a production of Escanaba in the moonlight and holy wah is something they say a lot so this little guy he's almost 12 inches tall look how tall this is um, so wow okay uh, one thing that right off the bat that would have been nice with the box is somewhere to put your fingers to lift it up. So you have to kind of reach in, and because it's such a huge box, you do have to pull out on the sides a little bit to allow the air to get in there, because otherwise you create a vacuum and then you can't pull it off. So you got to pull the sides out. If you're not doing it too bad, you shouldn't damage the game or the box. So there's that, and there's nothing on the inside. Now I've already 
opened this, gone through it. I was too excited. Uh, I had to do it. So uh, we'll, we'll put this over here. I uh, let's move we'll her just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So uh, I had already opened this. One thing that's awesome, right on top, is this card from Quartermaster Logistics. Those are the folks that shipped the game, I believe, across the pond to North America. I'm in the United States, and it actually. Uh, is a great little thing that they added saying hey if there's a problem with your game go right ahead let us know about it and here's how you contact us this is a great customer service it really is great customer service we're going to put that over there right on top is the rule book uh, I'm going to try and push this off to the side a little bit so this thing is hefty I mean it is high quality grade it is gloss I mean it is a hefty manual you can I mean here listen to it when it drops. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a hefty, really well uh, constructed manual. Um, I've not had a game with such a high quality paper manual in a long time. And like I said, I have th over 300 manuals. Usually you get this cheap paper, not quite newspaper quality, but not, you know, not glossy. This is almost like a magazine almost. Uh, it has all the rules. I've already saw a couple of typos. There's one point in here where it said something, uh, if I can find it really quick, uh, maybe they already caught it, but it said something about, uh, let's get her out of the way. Out of the way, hon. No, your tail's in the way. Come on. Out of the way. Off the table. There we go. Uh, it says, refer to the instructions on page, here it is right here, on page 7. Um, read more about boss fights on page XX. Well, maybe they mean 20. I don't know. Let's let's check page 20. Uh, and, no, boss fights are not on page 20. But it is quite a long manual. It has 58 pages. Um, and, wow. Now, right here in the back is a little word from them, a thank you. And it says right here, 2,593 backers. Excellent manual. Uh, so, let's move on. We have the uh, playboard. So this is where you're going to put your tiles that basically make up the game board, and they'll slide across. Now mine's a little warped, as you can see. It shouldn't be a problem because the tiles slide in this way, and they're, if I remember, they're kind of shaped rectangular this way. So the warping shouldn't be a big problem, but it did get warped a little bit. Uh, maybe it's just, it just happened, unfortunately. So we're going to continue to put this stuff out in front. Next. I got the 3D edition. That's why the box is so darn huge. So look at this. This is amazing. Look at all these 3D models that they've included in here. So you have your gold armors, your uh, bone... I can't remember what the, the skeletons are called now. Your wisms, your hover hafts. Um, those are all in here. I think it's hover... or hover rat. I'm sorry, not hover haft. Uh, so you got a lot of those right there. And then the way... There's more, and they have these wonderful cutouts for your hands so you can reach right in and grab them. Here we have the larger, so we have the order of no quarter. So here we've got, uh, I can't see who that is, um, uh, Polar Knights, uh, that, uh, Plague Knight, King Knight, Tinker Knight, all of them are right there. Your four knights that are playable, that are part of the normal. Uh, they are colored, so that you don't have to try and identify them. Uh, some more uh, liquid samurai, and I think these are the hover hafts right here. Um, as far as the characters in the game, I really only know the Order of No Quarter and, and Shovel Knight himself and Black Knight, because as much as I love the game uh, and the characters, I suck at it. I'm absolutely terrible at it. I've never been good at platformers. Next, these are, if you didn't get the 3D version, you'll have the standees instead for each of the Order of No Quarter, as well as the characters. There's also standees for uh, Tinker Knight's uh, Juggernaut. I can't remember what it's called because I haven't even reached him yet in the game, so I don't know too much about Tinker Knight. Um, the first player token, so you can remember whose turn it is. Gold counters, that's the first of many cardboard cutouts. We have the uh, enemy stats card. Uh, it's still in its its uh, pet, uh, protective case here. So it's kind of neat. It's got this wonderful little 
uh, battlement uh, uh, graphic on the back with some gold armors up there on the crenellation. Uh, and then, of course, how each of the enemies act, what their stats are. Um, I guess I should have given a little bit closer look at this as well. Uh, the play field itself for the bosses. I'm getting, I'm running out of space here. Because this, there's a lot in this game. Um, so next up, we have the boss arena. Uh, so there is two sides to it. I haven't read through all the way yet what the other side is for. Um, so this is basically where the boss fights occur. And I pointed this out long ago in Kickstarter when they first showed this art. There's something very disturbing about this entire artwork, and it's Shovel Knight's horn down here in the corner. Um, what happened to the poor little guy? That he lost a horn. Um, but anyhow, uh, you know, I guess he, he got beat up quite a bit there. Uh, some more cutouts. So these are uh, treasure tokens, as well as gold counters, health counters. Uh, you can do it one of two ways. The rule book says the health counters, you put them down as your knight is injured. I kind of look at it the other way around. You take him away, because why would he gain hearts when he's, you know, getting injured? I would think you'd put down the three to start with and then take them away as he's getting injured. Uh, same with the foes. But then you might end up with too many out on the board. I don't know. Uh, they are two-sided, of course. And on the other side of the treasure tokens up there in the top, uh, these are the various treasures that you can get. And even though this is only going to be used once, this punch-out board, great feature, again, that they came up with. They cut out that corner there, so you can easily just pick it right up out of the box. And I may, well, I will punch this one out, because I'll need these pieces. We have another one. This one I may not punch out, uh, because it's the standees for the various enemies. Since I have the 3D version, I don't need... Hi! We have a cat photobombing us, or video bombing us. Um, so I may not punch this out because I have the 3D version. But here we have our gold armors, our bone... I cannot remember what they're called. And the wisms and the hover rats. Uh, so those are in there. We have another cutout, our punch board of the Order of No Quarter and the four knights themselves and some more health tokens. So we got everybody on there as well as the liquid samurai and the hover hafts. I'm looking at the back side here. Um, so we've got all that. Now we're going to get into some of the components that are, or more of the components, I should say. Some of the components. So even though I opened up the box yet, I haven't uh, unwrapped anything or, unpunched, or punched anything yet. Unpunched. How do you do that? So here we have the uh, deck for uh, the, what does this say? Uh, I can't, my, my sight is so terrible, I can't read that. Initiate. <laughs> enunciate, anyhow. Uh, it looks like it's attacks and such. So these are things that you can purchase to upgrade during the game, or upgrade your knight. Uh, there might be some others in there. Uh, it's all listed in the rule book what all the components are. I probably should have gone through all those before getting into this particular bit. Um, here are your various spikes, or your spike pits, that uh, you can, or traps and such, I should say. They have the spike pit graphic on them. So these would go, I believe, on the tiles as you're playing. Um, so a deck of cards there. And of course these all have the little, uh, I don't know what you call them, the little thing that you can pull and just easily unwrap them. Um, and then your cat can pick them up and eat them. So be very careful if you do have kitties. We have two huge decks. These are going to be the decks which are for the Order of No Quarter as well as the Knights. Uh, so there's going to be the boss AI decks. I'm not going to go into how the game works. That might be a later video if you haven't already gone through a video for this yet. Um, but the boss AI decks, each uh, boss has a different AI basically. Uh, and there's uh, the knights and their various abilities in here as well. Two very thick decks there. Um, we're almost through. We have, I'm going to show that later. So let's get into, we have down here uh, the stat cards. So these are for each of the bosses as well as the uh, knights themselves. The Order of No Quarter, the knights. Uh, is the Enchantress a member of the Order of No Quarter? Or is she, um, you know, 
outside of it because she's like the big honcho. I don't know. A whole bunch of stands because, of course, if you don't have, the, if you have the 2D version, you're going to need a lot of these. So they included a lot. In fact, it looks like they couldn't fit them all, so they put this extra little baggie in of what looks like about eight more in there. Um, so a whole bunch of standees. Got a lot of stuff going on there. And I believe, oh, there's two last things in here that are part of the base set. The dice. So it is a dice game. It's one of those ones where you pick, you just have a number of dice that you roll. And then, of course, on the dice themselves are the symbols. So you have attack, jump, and armor. Uh, and I believe those are for jump, as it indicated. Attack for uh, attacks. And armor is a representation of defense. So... You have a bunch of those, and these dice are really nice because the symbols, not only are they uh, dyed, uh, ironically, dyed, dyed, um, but the, uh, the symbols are also etched into the surface, so they won't fade off over time. You'll at least have that, uh, that recessed etching in there. Uh, not Vegas balanced, of course, but <laughs> we're not in Vegas. Finally, in the base set, we have the tiles themselves that go on the board as you're playing. I'm going to put this over here. I probably should have put that over. Some great artwork on here, by the way, uh, on the side of the box. So right here we have the various tiles that will go on. So when you're playing the game, uh, you'll see at the top there, there's a little arrow that points to the top of the board. And then they just kind of slide in. And then the game actually works like a side scroller because what happens is I think you only have four at a time and then you slide one in and that one slides off. Uh, and it just keeps going like that. So there are, now I don't know all the regions. Um, as much as I love the lore of the game, I don't know it well enough to know what each of the regions are. I know there's Pride Moor, uh, there's the Airship. But you can see there are various themes. There's Polar Knights. There's uh, Tinker Knights. Uh, I think that's Tinker Knight. Uh, maybe that's Tinker Knight. But uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Mole Knight. That's going to be Mole Knight. Yep. Uh, and then there's more. You flip it over. So there's the Explodatorium for Plague Knight. There's, I don't know, that's probably Spectre Knight. That kind of looks like it with uh, gold armor. That's kind of a neat little artwork. I don't know how well you can see him there in the second from top. He's kind of in there. Uh, and each of these uh, tiles, they're static of course, but there's enough variety where you have the two sides and the, you shuffle them up that each game, you know, there should be enough permutations of the game to make it fun and you shouldn't run into a lot of repeat in the game. So this is all the base content of Shovel Knight, Dun uh, Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, the board game. I'm going to get into now the three extra levels that I, or extras, that I backed as well. I didn't back everything because as much as I love uh, the characters and the franchise itself, I didn't want to spend that much because I already did spend a lot on this. And what's really sad is I don't know if I'm ever going to play this game with friends. I buy so many board games and I never end up playing them. So I'm going to start with the uh, first one I'm going to just pick out of here. And it was uh, Shield Knight. So Shovel Knight's love. Shield Knight. She can be played as a character. Um, she came in her own separate, uh, what do they call them? The little uh, cubic uh, with the backing uh, 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 plastic, whatever, packaging. This was what was behind her in there and then inside that if I can find it was her card uh, she is just a player character or playable character she is not an enemy of course and they also did include the standee in case you just wanted to play with the standee so that's shield knight and everything for shield knight so Shovel Knight has his love, of course. Um, we're going to put her right over here with all of her stuff. The next one that I backed is now, <laughs> there's uh, some discussion, is this canon or not? Uh, we've never seen Shovel Knight without his helmet. So there's the theory, I don't know if it's true, Fishhead. That, that is what Shovel Knight looks like without his helmet. Now, it might be difficult to see that. But, uh, you know, there's one point in another 
game. It's not Shovel Knight. It's a game that he appears in where his helmet falls off and he quickly puts it back on. And this is what he looks like when he doesn't have his helmet on. Um, so is it canon or not? I don't know. But that's Fish Head, as they call him. He, of course, comes with his own card and uh, you know his uh, model. That's what they call him, the model. His own standee. It's t the standees are two-sided, which is kind of cool. He's uh, left-handed or right-handed, I guess, which kind of is cool because when you think about the way games go, a lot of these games, the characters are ambidextrous, ambidextrous anyhow, because they just keep uh, flipping things, right, as you mirror the sprite, and of course the card that came with it in the back. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, if you've watched my videos for City Skyline, City of Heroes, and Astrodeer, you'll know I have very low production value. I'm using a Nikon uh, Coolpix camera for recording this. I bought it I don't know how long ago, and it still does okay for video recording, but I haven't used it in close to five years and apparently the battery is going on it and that's what happened I lost the battery so it, the good thing is that it cut out right at the end of where I was introducing fish head so I was gonna get to the final and third piece that I are final and third part of the extras or uh, I, I forget what they call them uh, on Kickstarter uh, goals, extended goals that I backed, which is a character that I think is very underutilized in Shovel Knight. He's really cool to me because unlike uh, he's not really an antagonist, he's just a rival to Shovel Knight, but he's not necessarily uh, he's, he's after the same thing, but he's not against Shovel Knight. And uh, it, it's just a really cool character, and of course that would be a Black Knight. Um, so Black Knight, uh, I backed him. He's got his own boss uh, cards as well as he can be a playable character just like the others. He does have his own cardboard standee. Um, and there's Dax again. She's knocking over Shield Knight. She doesn't like Shield Knight apparently. Let's put that back up there. So, uh, He's got his own card, or standee, he's got his own model, and of course he did come with his own card, or I should say backing, that was in there, and he does have his own um, boss car, bo boss car? Boss card, which is the flip side, so he can be a boss, as well as, of course, he has... Um, his normal playable character. Now, uh, oh, and then of course he has his own AI deck. So there's an AI deck. There's an example of an AI card. It shows basically how he moves on the board. Uh, the final boss fight move. Or <sighs> words are really hard for me. I'm sorry. How he moves on that uh, final throne room. So there it is. There's a, oh, and one thing I did forget, uh, these are little markers that I presume go on uh, some of the cards that kind of, they're like paper clips that can move along on the cards. Uh, I haven't figured out what those are for yet, but I'm pretty certain they're in there somewhere. So there it is, everybody, the unboxing of Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, a really fun game, I think, from what I've seen on YouTube. Uh, it looks like it could be a lot of fun. It's a family game, so obviously it's not a serious game. It looks like it could be finished. In, well, it says here, age 10 plus, 30 to 45 minutes, 1 to 4 players. Um, Component-wise, I'm really happy. There's a tray in here as well. I should have shown you that. Uh, so, you know, hide my ugly mug. Um, you know, I... <laughs> she'll get out of the way. No, she won't. Okay. Uh, as much as I love my cat, there she goes. Okay. 
Um, she loves to have attention, as you can see. But anyhow, there is a tray inside here, which now is stuck partially. This obviously is not intended to come out. So uh, the only thing that I would say would have been nice for the pa uh, packaging is if I had backed all the ex ex extended goals, I think it's goals, right? Um, there, wouldn't have been, there would not be enough room in here for all of them. At least, I don't believe there would be. Uh, everything is pretty tightly packed in here. So what I'll do is I'm going to put all this back in here for the bottom layer and show you what it looks like when it's all packed in there. Now, um, I think this was how everything was in here. But it could be different. And there were a couple of spots that... Nope, those were there. And then these... Yeah, I'm kind of forgetting. Oh, those were there. Yep. Okay, the cards. The big card decks were there. The little cards for all these guys. And then I put all of these cards as well. Now, I don't have to keep these, but I'm going to. Why? Because there's enough space for them. Um, at least in the spot where I'm putting them. So we're going to put those away. This, uh, I may put remove the stands from the game box because since I have the 3D version I don't need all the stands. Uh, but I haven't played with Mole, uh, Tinker Knight yet so I don't know if Tinker Knight requires uh, a stand for his particular uh, whatever that mech is that he has. So there's everything in the bottom of the box. So there's really not a lot of space for a lot of the additional things that you may have received. The uh, models, as you can see, I j they're just kind of thrown in there. Um, and I, they should be okay. I'm a little concerned with Shield Knight and uh, Black Knight and Fishhead, to be honest, because the horns on Black Knight and Shield Knight are the wings. She has wings, not horns could break off if these aren't well protected uh, and the shovels as well on the back of um, Black Knight and the shovel that Fish Head holds you know his little uh, feelers on his helmet or on his head uh, they're a little fragile so I may have to find some bubble wrap for them but if I were to have it bought all the 3D models that you could have gotten all the stretch goals that's what they call them stretch goals um, there wouldn't be enough space in here. Uh, so they knew that all those stretch goals existed. It would have been nice to have somewhere to put them all. But as I said, they did do a lot of really good thinking about it. This notch in the corner right here, excellent idea. It makes pulling those out so much easier. You just put your finger over there and you lift up and there you go. Of course, that's a one-time only thing too, but it's still a really good idea and I really am happy about that. Uh, this is the, the room I was talking about. I still have to figure out what the back side is used for. Um, and in a future video, I may actually go through and do a playthrough of Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, the board game. But right now, I'm going to have to start wrapping it up because my battery might go on this thing again. So everybody, I was, I've been really excited about this. I'm really excited. This is how excited I am. I don't like showing myself because, as you can see, I'm not the most photogenic person. And I have been very leery about ever showing myself on screen. Um, I do theater. Uh, and I don't mind being on stage because there's no permanent there. This is kind of a permanent thing that I'm a little afraid of that, you know. <laughs> I, like I said, I'm not the most photogenic person. So, there it is, everybody. Shovel Knight, Dungeon Duels, the board game. What a monster box that is. I'm sure if they did try to get all the stretch goals into that thing, it would have been a lot larger. Uh, but I'm going to also put over in a little inset corner how FedEx dropped this off on my driveway. It was literally just tossed in the middle of my driveway. And we had some really nasty storms come through this weekend. Um, that... 
left a lot of debris on my driveway. I haven't gotten around to clearing off my driveway yet. So it's this box in the middle of my driveway with all this crud around that I need to get off my driveway. Uh, so I got home and I'm pulling into my driveway and there's just this box in the middle of the driveway. So, uh, you know, usually they would drop it off on the porch. Uh, just to let you know a little of other things, since I may have a few moments here, uh, you can't see over here on camera, but, uh, you know, this is how much I love the characters from Shovel Knight. Um, so I actually do have uh, some of the Arby's uh, toys. Um, I found out through that that the kids' meal is actually a, not a bad lunch. It's like two chicken tenders, fries, and a water. That's you know, a good lunch. So uh, I have no problem asking for a kid's meal. Uh, and I got everybody but the Enchantress. Mm. Oh, well. so uh, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, the board game. Uh, if you were not able to get it, I don't know if they're offering it to those that were not in the original pledge. You can check uh, Panda Cult Games. That is the people that published the board ver board game version of it fully licensed of course through Yacht Club Yacht Club uh, you help them with this a lot and of course license the characters the intellectual property it's set uh, and a lot of take four hey everybody sorry I've had so many technical problems while recording this particular video it's the first one I've done so I'm learning a lot uh, just to let you know if I do this again it will be done better I'm looking for my tripod literally the camera that I'm recording with right now is sitting on the top of a Game of Thrones blu-ray set so that's why it's been wobbling uh, and why it, the angle is really terrible uh, if I do this again it will be a lot better so uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, what you saw about the unboxing of Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, the board game. I would like to try and do, maybe even get Captain Clueless Kadef and maybe a fourth person together and actually have a demonstration of the plane of the game. And if you really do like what you saw here and you want to see more board game uh, demonstrations and such, let me know. As I said, I have 300 plus board games. Most of them are really not that remarkable, but some of them are very unique and you may not have seen before. A lot of them are train games you may have heard of, such as uh, Ticket to Ride. But then there is also my other favorite board game genre, which is the 18XX series, 1853 specifically, which is based in India. But I don't want to get into all those other things. This is about Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, the board game. I will tell you right now, two out of two plush knights love Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels. And a cat just likes to look at the box and get in the way. So let me know in the comments what you thought. And I would love to do this again, everybody. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.